This is the Comics Alternative, on location at Collected Comics and Games in Plano, Texas. And welcome to another episode of the Comics Alternative on location. I'm Derek, one of the two guys with PhDs, talking about comics. And as I try to do every month, I am at my local comic shop to talk with customers and people who work at the shop. They are at 3100 Independence Parkway in Plano, Texas. It is on the corner of Independence and Parker. If you're in the area, please be sure to stop by. It's a great place to get comics. And one of the things that makes this such a great shop is the people who work here. They are friendly. They will help you out. They will make recommendations. And you just can't get any better than these guys. So that's Collected Comics and Games in Plano. Make sure when you stop by to tell them that the two guys with PhD sent you. So here we are in the month of May, and I'm talking with the store manager, Sabrina, who's joining us again. This is becoming more of a routine, and I appreciate that. Yeah. So so that's great. And then regulars, we have Craig, Matt, and Chris. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Pretty good. And uh, I know that this is going to be an active uh, conversation because before we started recording, several of you started to talk about the various uh, things that you wanted to bring up, and you were rather impassioned. And I think one of the things to fuel that passion is that all of you are here to pick up your weekly comics, so you definitely have something excited to talk about. Oh, yeah. It's, it's new comic book day. There's it, Every day on Wednesday is a great day. <laughs> Well, okay, well, let's start there because, I mean, this is going to be an open topic. And, oh, Stephanie, uh, another shop employee and who has joined us regularly, uh, has just joined us. Hey, guys. <laughs> so we have a full table here. Yes, so we okay, let's start with the stacks that you guys have. You've picked up your comics. What are you most excited about this week? Uh, most excited about this week is DC Universe Rebirth, number one. Uh, their DC is finally apologizing for the 52 and <laughs> is now retconning it. <laughs> Uh, so now, you know, there's, you know, supposedly they're going to join with the 52, but in reality they're going to get rid of it. And so they're bringing back characters that you loved from the past, like Wally West, um, Jaime Ramirez, you know, the Blue Beetle. Or Jaime Ramirez. <laughs> yes, sorry. Are we getting second back? Uh, well, Raven will be back in her more traditional costume. because all that type of stuff. So a lot of great stuff is going on with with uh, the DC universe right now. Where it's they're also bringing back Ryan Choi and Ray, uh, Ray Palmer. So basically, they're doing this whole uh, get ring, getting rid of the whole there can only be one mentality on legacy characters, which is nice. And you know, I should uh, remind our listeners, as if they may not need any reminding, those who listen on a regular basis, that when it comes to these on location shows, this is probably the most mainstream to the Comics Alternative podcast ever gets. Because when we do our regular shows, yes. and, uh, the weekly episodes, and, and even the monthly ones, uh, you know, we will talk about some mainstream, just not mainstream superheroes but on on location shows anything is fair game especially when it's an open topic like this so this is a way not only for our listeners to get a little superhero discussion in but also for me to learn more about what's going on within Marvel and DC's universe because sometimes I feel a little bit out of the loop there (laughs) so continue yeah, to so. enlighten about so so you have the DC Universe Rebirth issue one here right right why uh, Jeff Johns it's and, a huge issue yeah it's it's a it's a big old special issue it's beautiful uh, it's also it's, cheaper than most uh, comics of its size because usually when yeah. you get a full size issue like that it's like four ninety nine but they were like hey we're gonna go back to two ninety nine prices and that includes with this really big issue which is Yay. a nice apology to the fans I think it is and also DC seems to have a history of trying to hold as they say you know hold the line at two ninety nine <laughs> and whether they been successful at that completely is another story, but at least they make an effort. I think they play jump rope with the line. <laughs> but at least they have a line. I mean, it, it's 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 the complete opposite from Marvel, and I, 
you know, I all, have always considered Marvel a money grubbing publisher. And I mean, <laughs> really, I mean, anything yeah. that they can do to make money, whether it be double shipping, whether it be charging incredible prices for flimsy 22 page comics, mm -hmm. you know, they'll do it. And I mean, they're part of Disney's. I, I, that shouldn't surprise me. And by the way, our <laughs> listeners should know that I am not a fan of the Disney empire. Uh, I like Marvel comics. Um, I just have some reservations. If you don't want to be surprised, Marvel is going to have another Marvel Now event in the fall where they're going to have all new number ones once again. You're, you're friggin' kidding me. Uh, no. and, it's once, and, and they're not, and it's going back, it's not like Marvel, it's a called Marvel Now, so that's the second time we've had a Marvel Now announcement. Why do we even have numbers on comics anymore? <laughs> we have, well, I mean, the, the, I why are they calling it Marvel Now again? Why don't we call it Marvel Stop? <laughs> Is there some kind of big Marvel event that's going to be time? happening? Um, we do not know about any event. They just announced it because they're trying to take away as much thunder from DC as they can today. <laughs> I think that's a big yeah. tease, though, right? That there might be some big event that it, causes It's either going to be probably uh, Civil War II, or it might be the Death of X, or it might be the Spider-Man event happening. Yeah. Or mm, the myriad of no, other true. events that might be happening at Marvel. <laughs> Is there any chance they'll figure out what they're doing with the X-Men? Could that be uh, it? No, that's... Probably not. No. <laughs> yeah, because they're, 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 so. they're at war with Fox, so... That's yeah. not going to happen. See, it's on occasions like this that I'm thankful that Andy Kunkka and I decided from the very beginning <laughs> not to look at mainstream superhero titles. Again, we, we enjoy them, but if we did include them in our weekly discussions, this would just be other layers <laughs> of... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be family friendly. Stuff that we have to shovel through yeah. uh, in yeah. terms of figuring out what's going on. Um, yeah. I don't know. Especially with X Men, you could do an entire podcast. Oh, just oh, to there is an entire podcast crap. on X Men. <laughs> I'm sure there's 12. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had to, or I rather, had to alphabetize all our X Men books, and that was a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I've done that too. <laughs> it's crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Sure yeah, yeah, but to be fair on that. I bet you most of those X-Men books were out in the 80s and 90s when X-Men was king. Yeah. And so yeah, good. you put out tons of X-Men books because that's what people were buying. Mm -hmm. Now it's Avengers books. Try to advertise that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, good so luck with that. Which flavor of X-Men would you like today? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, well. And that was kind of it. It was, admittedly, maybe I'm nostalgic and old, but... Uh, <laughs> But that was it. It's like, at least those books, they had different characters in each book. It wasn't just the same character in every book, except maybe Wolverine. But, Put him in uh, but it was, Wolverine you, you picked the book that you liked because you liked those characters. You said, oh, I wanted to get, you know, just, you know, this type of X-Men book because I like Bishop and I like this character and like this character. And the other book, like, well, but I'm more of a, a Wolverine and Jean Grey fan, so I'm going to pick up this book. Uh, so you didn't have to pick them all up. Uh, unless you wanted to, as, which, you know, like I said, I'm an X-Men fan, so I did, but yeah, you didn't have to do it, but you just picked those characters that you liked, and that was kind of fun with it. It was, they at least had different stories for each one. It wasn't... Yeah. Well, you know, here, here's a question for you, you know, since we're talking about, you know, Marvel and DC. Um, I know from talking with you guys month after month after month that you're much more into Marvel, you're... To put it lightly, skeptical when it comes, or a little suspicious when it comes to DC. Do you think <laughs> that the whole rebirth thing is going to win you over? Um, well, I can speak as someone who like got started with the Batman the Animated Series, and that's like honestly, I knew DC way better for the longest time, and actually love their characters more. Like this has honestly been a really good step in the right direction for me. And there's actually ideas I'm excited for. The Rebirth is. Yes, so like they have my favorite character, which is Jaime Reyes, um, also Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Cain are going to be on a book all the time mm. as main characters, and uh, Ryan Choi bringing him back, Wally West, the Teen Titans as Teen Titans. So I'm just, I'm kind of excited actually. I really hope that they do well. I want them to do well. So I, I don't want to see them fail as much as it sounded like that. <laughs> you know, I, I'm the same way. I, When I grew up reading comics in the 1970s, I was a DC guy. And I, I, I don't know if I ever got a Marvel title. And, and I think it was because a neighbor of mine was really into Marvel. And he and I were semi-competitors. So... You know, I would read the DC stuff and then advocate for DC characters. He would get the Marvel stuff and advocate for Marvel. Um, so it, it was it was a childish reason why I didn't read Marvel. But I have a particular fondness for DC, and I've, I've wanted them for quite a number of years now to to make it back 
to the top or at least near the top. Yeah. And and so I was excited when the new 52 came out. I wasn't one of those who was poo-pooing it because I thought, you know, this – I didn't like the renumbering. I, I still yeah. think that that's just you know, shenanigans. Right. I do. And um, yeah. I mean, there's but a, there's a there was a lot of potential it. there. But after the first few months, yeah. I, like, it, it lost yeah. – it's lost the For globe. me, like the very first line of publishing after the Justice League is where I knew they were in trouble because, like, uh, there just was no timeline. And it was really problematic because you had uh, Justice League is just now starting. This is the formation of Justice League. But meanwhile, in Justice League International, which takes place years years later, there's a Hall of Justice. So when did that happen? Why is it abandoned? Why is it being burned down in the first issue? And then you have, like, Batman. How many years has he been Batman? Why are all these Robins here? Yeah. It was just a... Uh, and also, just, it was really hard to wrap your mind around because they were like, oh, there will be answers later. But there never, ever were. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I was like you. I was, of course, I grew up a Marvel fanboy, but uh, but I always enjoyed certain characters in the DC universe. I, like you, I had a friend that was more of a DC fanboy, but unlike arguing, we actually shared our comic books. Uh, you know, I would read the Marvel stuff, and so I'd let him borrow my Marvel stuff, and I'd borrow his DC stuff, and then so I was actually hopeful for the for the fifty two because it would help me learn more about the DC universe because it would be you know the DC characters were supposed to take in as a whole and start all new story lines and a whole new continuity it sounded so promising and then after you know a month or two of it you're just like no it's mm -hmm. it's it's a mess it, they never you know like she saw just like batman was like 10 years ahead of the future of everybody else and you're like but wait how's he interconnecting with everybody yeah. and all that and it just never made any sense and then also like they didn't reboot the characters that would have been good and so their books kind of got sabotaged because they had a static shock book that carried over all of the old milestone history to them mm -hmm. which is really confusing if you don't understand it um because he had like two sisters and one of them was a clone of the other and it was like i don't understand that and then the jaime reyes instead of like doing a whole new storyline they were just retelling his old comic but really badly because they like took his main villains and took them from like this really like thousand year takeover plan of planets to like being like we're just gonna kill everyone and it just made no sense well see i had even forgotten that there was a static shock title <laughs> yeah with the new yeah. 52 yeah because until you just mentioned it, it. How, yeah how many how many issues did it last um uh, i think it? just one narrative arc i no, think yeah, maybe it six lasted, or eight yeah i was gonna say it didn't last all i think it, i thought it was 10 but yeah something like that but it was uh, really sad because there were so many people hyped for it but even if you picked it up you were like what is happening yeah you really point? had to know his cartoon and uh, mm -hmm. a whole lot of backstory with him to even understand what was going on in the in the comic book yeah. and it was just I picked up a lot of number a lot ones, of his cartoon like, um, I even oh, yeah. was really excited for Red Hood and the Outlaws when it came out because I was like okay you have Starfire who's this really who has been through probably way more than the other two and is very optimistic and that's a really good foil to these other two characters who have been through a lot and let it get to them and like that's going to be great you can have this book where they're helping each other heal and also going on wacky adventures but they turned her into like a sex object who's just like I can't remember anyone because I'm a goldfish and do you want to have sex and it's like yeah. I'm done <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, pretty yeah. much describes her perfectly yeah right <laughs> Well put. <laughs> Although the, the new Starfire uh, comic book that's come out recently has yeah. uh, reinvented her very well, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was good. I need to catch up, but it was good. <laughs> but you guys have hope for... I have hope yeah. for Rebirth yeah. because, yeah. you know, I just... I think Jeff Johns is finally taking control Well, he's DC. not writing any more comics well, yeah, because he's taking... He's, they, need some, they need him for the cinematic universe. Yeah, but they I think he's definitely him. put yeah. a stamp on it. <laughs> yeah. I think, which unlike the 52, which no one put yeah. any... And, any creative control on it I, mm -hmm. there it feels at least yeah. with this one that there is a creative direction mm -hmm. and that and yeah new artists and new writers mm -hmm. will take it in their own way but I think and there also, is at least a direction they also said they have a two year plan which I hope they are being yes, truthful about that because that's I feel more than they had with the new 52 is that you had this thing where it's like we need a timeline and this time it's like okay we're actually planning things out which is nice <laughs> and another thing and, and, and maybe I'm just remembering wrong uh, but with the new 52 one of the things that they were touting big time was the fact that they had so many big name creators on board mm -hmm. and then when they started to rotate some of those creators, writers, as well as artists off, you know, there was a lot of speculation, you know, is it editorial interference? What's going on? Is there bad blood? And, I mean, I don't know. I haven't been paying as much attention to the whole uh, rebirth, uh, you know, rigmarole. And so I don't know if they're getting 
fewer of these bigger names Actually, or if they are trying to tap into people that they already are have been working with? Well, they are trying to tap into new. Okay, well, you can't see that on a podcast. Well, new with quotation marks because they have she a She used right, the ironic quotes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Air quotes. They have a, a writer's and artist workshop. But when people read the fine print, they're like, we, you know, they're looking for comic professionals who maybe haven't worked for them before. But so they're not so much new, but they do want to take new talent in and... Um, and get new people because basically what happened is Image came along and went to Marvel and was like, hey, Marvel, do you want, uh, hey, Marvel artists, do you want to come over to us where you own your stuff? And they were like, of course. And so Marvel then went, was like, oh, God, where can we get people? And they went to DC and snagged their people. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole, like, drain of talent yeah. that they're trying to rebuild. <laughs> and also it was last year that DC announced a whole new set of, of creators um, you know, mm-hmm. working with them, many for the first time. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking of people like uh, Sonny Lou, mm-hmm. and you know, they brought Paul Levitz back. Yeah. Uh, you know, writing Doctor Fate with Sonny Lou. Uh, you know, Jean Louis Yang. You know, people like that. So, um, I mean, it, it's not as if they haven't gotten big names or trying yeah. to get those and since the Doom Fifty Two. And they also have. Uh, they're bringing the guy who's writing Vision right now. Is his name Tom King? Tom Tom King. King. Yeah, yeah, Tom King. They're taking him, and he's going to be a one year exclusive with them. And then they got Christopher Priest back, who wrote uh, Black Panther. He's going to be on Deathstroke. And then they got um, the guy who wrote Wonder Woman. What's his name? I can't remember him all of a sudden. Greg Rucka. Rucka, yeah. They're, they're having him. And that's a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, they, they're trying to get the big names in there. Okay. Yeah. And I just hope that, well, again, you know, as a couple of you have already mentioned, uh, I, I wish them well, and I hope that this writes the ship at least somewhat with DC mm-hmm. because things seem to be a little rocky. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, you know, it's unfortunate that it's taken them a rebranding, this whole rebirth thing. Because, mm-hmm. I, again, I'm always suspicious of mm-hmm. renumbering, rebranding, rebooting, whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and now when you tell me that Marvel is going to renumber yet again, I, see, I'm wondering if they can get through, if we can get through a year with <laughs> more than two number ones of the same title. If we can get to three and even four, <laughs> that would be a feat. <laughs> well, um, I think I mentioned this on the podcast Oh, for Marvel? Before. No, it wouldn't be too much. Believe but uh, Squirrel Girl made a joke about that, where um, in her newest number one, there was a callback to something that happened in her old number one, and they were like, hey, if you're confused, go read our old number one. Don't worry, your comic store probably still has it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gotta love meta jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, okay, we, we've been talking quite a bit about DC, but uh, before we turned on the mic, a couple of you, Stephanie, <laughs> you in particular, were chomping at the bit to talk about some Marvel news. And, and maybe we should mention, if you're going to discuss this, okay. that this may be a spoiler for, a spoiler. Oh, yeah. for, for mm-hmm. listeners. So, <laughs> and, and it deals with Captain America. Mm-hmm. If you are getting Captain or Steve Rogers' Captain America number one, but you haven't yet read it, and you're listening to this, and you you don't like spoilers, you may want to skip ahead a few minutes, or turn this off, read that issue, and then come back to the podcast later. Okay, so there you go. There's your spoiler warning. If you've managed to avoid the spoiler online, don't spoil it for yourself here. Just go read it and then come back. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a big if. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so Stephanie, you were telling me before we started that uh, you know your experience with learning about this yesterday, okay. the day before this issue came out. Yeah. So yesterday, this news leaked about what happened with Captain America number one, uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America number one, was um, basically the outhouse, which is known for being like a satire sometimes site who does stuff like has DC messed up today counter on their page. So they're no, they're known for that kind of stuff. Broke the news that in ca- in this new issue, Steve was always a secret Hydra agent, which a lot of people were upset about because he was created by. Um, Jack Kirby, and who was very Jewish and also known for making this anti-Nazi propaganda when that was not popular to make. And uh, as well as also, he just had a movie out, and a lot of people love Captain America, and you're going this direction. And then a lot of people also were arguing, oh, it's not real, you're just going to find that out tomorrow, and you guys are going to be so stupid. And then they also showed like the the panel at the end with uh, Steve and a very young, blonde-looking Eric Selvig from the, the Marvel Universe tied up, and a lot of people were like, oh, that's Steve. 
Um, but today, it is indeed true. He's apparently always been a secret Nazi, which is kind of maybe tasteless slash maybe not making sense because Craig was talking about that. <laughs> well, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. You know, if he was already a secret Hydra agent, there are, you know, we can go back in Captain America's past where there's been several times where Hydra's just ready to take over the world and Captain America comes in and saves the day. If he was a secret Hydra agent, why wasn't he not helping them? You know, he was already... You know, you know, he's already got all the superheroes in one thing. He could have had them all well, beaten up. Not to mention, like, why didn't he help them in World War II? That seems and like the best time to help them. Or that, or, or even... Or you could even go up there with, you know, several crossovers again where you had the, the fear storyline. Mm -hmm. You know, Sin was coming down and wrecking all this stuff, ready to take over the world, and he could have just outed himself right there. I'm going to go with the winners. And yeah. <laughs> become one of the hammer welders yeah. as well. Also, what about uh, Original Sen? Shouldn't his Original Sen have been like, oh wait, I'm a secret Hydra agent, and everyone was like, Steve, what? Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's just, and you can go on forever. We can yeah. go on for the, an hour-long yeah. podcast of where <laughs> Captain America has saved the day and could have easily have helped Hydra. And starting in and Captain why, America number one. <laughs> right, and now all of a sudden it's like, oh, surprise, guess what? And you're like, wait, yeah. this doesn't make sense with the character, doesn't make sense with anything. So I'm yeah. kind of hoping that the cosmic cube that changed him back has messed him up somehow, or perhaps the guy in the chair is actually Steve Rogers and it's, you know, some guys impersonating him. Anyways, I bought something else. <laughs> so this is another death of Captain America. This is a character death. It's kind of a character assassination, I would imagine, because like when uh, Tony Stark was the villain in Civil War, the original, like people were, hated him, and then they made a movie out of him, and it was all okay again. But you can bring a character back from this, but it's like, is it a good idea to go there in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't terribly popular before Civil War, but yeah, Civil War did not help. <laughs> um, I mean, I have not... I, I, I don't know the context behind it, Um but it's I, I have more problem with it because it just doesn't seem to make any sense. Yeah. Um, like I'm at this point, I'm just kind of lobbying. I don't know, secret body swap that it's appeared off that happened off, yes. that happened off panel, and yeah. that's not actually Steve. That's somebody else. It's in the there. Red Skull. I'm telling you, it's yeah. the Red Skull that's yeah. cloned himself well, to Steve Rogers' body. Or yeah. possibly what also happened is during um, Uncanny Avengers, written by Rick Remender, he took the body of. Professor X out of the ground and then somehow yeah. that brain was perfectly preserved and he put his brain in that brain and had mind control abilities so possibly that's what's happening here but it's also like like uh, I just I, I, maybe I'm giving people too much credit and I probably am but I feel like no matter how stupid people can be and people can be very stupid there had to have been a number of people that okayed this, and I feel like it's not possible for all of them to have been, we're doing this unironically and for serious, let's do it, this is a great idea. I feel like there's well, something we don't know what's going on. Uh, can it's, I it's, 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 make a counterpoint? The New 52, the entirety of that, a lot of people okayed that. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't... Yeah, that wasn't was egregiously bad. Like that had potential to be okay. This is there's no there's pretty much no way this is going to end well if it is unironically being played for serious. This is how they're trying to play it. New Fifty Two had potential to not be awful. It just wasn't handled very well. Yeah. So I, I been... also would like to suspect that knowing that you have a successful film franchise with Captain America, mm -hmm. a successful toy franchise with Captain America. That they have a plan. And yeah, like I'm sure there's a plan, but it's one no, of those questions of should we have done it to exactly. begin with? Exactly. Yeah. I understand that part too. Mm -hmm. But I'm hopeful that this is just really a great shock value towards a good story. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's what I'm hopeful for, and I usually get hit in the head later. But, <laughs> uh, but I'm hopeful that that's what this is. You don't kill the golden goose and. Well, I mean, there, there's been a really bad track record with the Captain America books in recent years, though, because when Remender was writing it, he did a 2-4 on Uncanny and uh, Captain America, where he basically went and killed off uh, Scarlet Witch for a bit, and she was about to be in her first movie, and they also killed off um, Sharon, who was about to be in her first movie. So it's like, you don't kill the characters that are about to be in the movie. No, in fairness, Remender did a lot of weird yeah. stuff. So. Remender, I have a bad relationship with yeah. that man's writing. <laughs> I, you know, for me in Captain America, and I don't have near the experience with Captain America that you guys do, but it doesn't get any better than Ed Brubaker. 
Brew Baker was the best. Yeah, yeah. right. That's and I true. think, and I, yeah, and, I, and I think that one of the things that that Brew Baker brought, and say that three times fast, <laughs> to Captain America is his experience with uh, crime and espionage mm-hmm. narrative. And I think that that worked really well in his long run on mm-hmm. Captain America. I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and, and Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he's yeah. the only one that brought Bucky back. Yeah. No one else could figure it out, but he did it and made it make sense. Yeah, yeah and, and usually when, especially in the Marvel Universe, and again, mm-hmm. our, my li- our listeners may be thinking I pick on Marvel. Perhaps I do. <laughs> Um, when they bring people back from the dead, I, you know, I'm always stopping. So, okay, stop it. Do you need to do this? Why not a new new character? Uh, like, so, for instance, Gwen uh, during the, the Clone Saga. And I'm not talking about the original. I'm talking about the, the second one <laughs> that went on for two frickin' ever. Uh, oh, it's like, okay. just, just leave her dead. Okay, just mm-hmm. leave her dead. Don't bring her back anymore. Of course, now we have, what, Gwen Pole, Gwen, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, Spider Gwen, all of that. But when Brubaker brought Bucky back, <laughs> this is a show of alliteration. Yeah. Um, it made sense. It worked really well. Yeah, he, he was, uh, I agree, usually when you bring back characters, it's like, well, we just want to bring him back, just deal with it. And <laughs> But this, he really, well, really thought out on that whole storyline, and of course he also had a plan, you know, as we all know, he replaced Captain America when Captain America died, uh, and then, you know, it worked, it worked out mm-hmm. great, and then, of course, you know, when he got tired of being Captain America, he faked his own death, so he could be <laughs> back to being, you know, Bucky again, mm. you know, it, and Brubaker thought of all of that stuff. And, yeah. He was amazing, and still is amazing. He's still out there writing comic books, and they're absolutely amazing. Okay, well, let me ask you this. On On a less grandiose note, what do you think of the new DC symbol? I actually I like it. Oh, I, I like it a lot Where's because it? I oh, just never it? liked the whole peeling that's sticker it's, back it's, because if you do not know who DC is, that symbol isn't going to uh, tell you, oh, that's DC. This is yeah. like, it's DC. Mm-hmm. It's it's not, I still have a fondness for the one they had before the New 52, even though I know that wasn't popular, but that was the one I grew up with-ish. Yeah. So, but I like it because if you look at that, you're like, that's DC. Yeah, that's, and from what I've heard, they... When designing that, they wanted to get the same feel. They wanted to take the look of the big three, Superman, Batman, and Wonder mm-hmm. Woman, and the the lettering that's associated with them, mm-hmm. and to, to blend them in such a way that it says DC. For me, when I saw this, I mean, I thought of the DC that I grew up with. Yeah, and uh, that's, the on- it's very evocative of their longest-running symbol, yes. too. And the only thing that they could have done to make it different, or at least more like the old DC that I grew up with, is to tilt the DC mm-hmm. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, someone yeah, actually did an edit of that with, like, a uh, put they tilted it slightly, put to like a star above and below, and it looked you know it was like very evocative of DC. Um, that would have probably been slightly better, but I still like it. Like you know that is DC. <laughs> yeah, as having just just seen it about twenty yeah, it seconds ago, um, I like it more than the peeling sticker one, like you said, because it, mm-hmm. it's it's more clear what it is. But and this might just be the fact that I'm right in the middle of a design a two D design class. It's boring. It's really boring. Like I feel like they could have done more with it. What the new DC symbol? The new DC symbol. Oh. Yeah, like it's definitely it's definitely on the right track from the old DC symbol, but it's really boring. Well, you know, s- simple can be better, can be more powerful. Yeah, it is a- like the the thing we had just talked about in class yesterday actually was that there's, you know, the the things you see on the surface and then the things that it represents in the like when you start taking. When you start looking at it, like if you look at the Pepsi logo, it apparently represents like 18 bajillion different things. Um, but like, there's just there's just like uh, I don't know how to dis- explain this because I haven't finished the class yet. I'm bad at words. Oh, I think you explained it pretty well. It's yeah. Boring. <laughs> well, you know, on the topic yeah. of redesigning images or saying. logos, especially to make them simple, here's here's um, a bit of news. And in fact, this is the first time that we've announced it. Uh, so this is an exclusive here on this On Location episode in May. And that is the Comics Alternative is soon going to be getting a new logo. Ooh. And it is designed by not only a friend of the podcast, but also customer of this shop, Andy Hirsch. Oh, no, nice. fantastic. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, cool. And I won't say much about it outside of the fact that 
it is a clean, simple design, and that's what I, that's why I thought of it because of the new DC symbol. Yeah. And it, it it's not elaborate, but I think it's very powerful in what it does. Yeah. And uh, he and I are emailing back and forth now about just tweaking things here or there, but it looks great, and I can't wait to use it. I can't so, wait to see it. It sounds yeah. fantastic. And we're going we're gonna to get new business cards, and we're even going to get T-shirts. Oh, awesome! Uh, with that new symbol. So nice. I like T-shirts. Yes. I make my own T-shirts. Uh, yeah, and in fact, one of the things I want to do in the months to come is to not only print up, let's you know, T-shirts with the official Comics Alternative logo, but see if I can get creators to do illustrations. Every now and again, if you know, I, I, we can't afford to pay people a lot to do this stuff. Uh, but if they want to do it out of the kindness of their heart, in fact, if our listeners out there are artists, uh, and, and to to do something that says something about their style, but also says something about the comics alternative. So, um, and in fact, just recently, I asked um, you know, really good friend of the show, Craig Yo. Oh, yeah. to do an illustration for us and he gladly did and said you guys are my favorite podcast I'll do it for you and I told him make it comics alternative but make it you and he definitely made it him in that there are a couple parts of that that are a little suggestive so I don't know if it's appropriate for one of our t-shirts uh, but I love the illustration it's beautiful and I, I just don't know if we're going to be able to, to put it on a t-shirt but you know th- that is that is my plan might get a business card out in the future yeah um but I do want uh, to, to do some T-shirts in the near future, definitely with our new logo by Andy Hirsch, and uh, maybe with some other illustrations. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. Oh, that's very uh, exciting. On a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So okay, now other things on the topic of things to look forward to. This entire time that we've been recording, Matt has meticulously been going through <laughs> the uh, the June previews catalog, which just came out today, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Matt and I. So what are you seeing in there that is apparently consuming your attention to where you're you're not saying anything? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say meticulous, but. Um the only thing of note that I've seen so far is the evil Ernie God Eater uh, new short story that's going to uh, come out. Oh, that out, will I be guess. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> you can put that in my box now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on. You're talk- Okay, so that is what stands out to you. As you were flipping through, I saw that they've solicited the third March book, okay? That's big news. Oh. But no, what gets your attention, Evil Ernie. Well, of course. <laughs> if, if I may, about March news, they are going to do a three-book three, uh, three book box set. Mm-hmm. So if you have not read March, you can pick up all of it in yeah. one set. Oh, it's fan. It, it's uh, I've read March one, and basically it's talking about the march on Washington. Oh, cool. uh, so if you're into history, uh, especially the civil rights movement, I highly recommend it. Yeah. John Lewis co-wrote that. Yeah. Uh, Nate Powell does the uh, art. So the first cool. part is literally them getting organized to do the march on Washington. Hmm. Uh, I, and you said it's a box set. Come well, it will or it be. Will soon. be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know they're they're doing they're doing with March what let's say Fanographics has done with Hip Hop Family Tree, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you got the first Hip Hop Family Tree book, then when the second one came out, they made available the box set of the first two. Well, I didn't get the box set because I already had the first book, so I just got the second book. I'm not going to double dip with right. the box. Right. And last month, or at least I guess this month in May, they did something similar with books three and four. They solicited book four, but you can get a box set of three and four from Fantagraphics for Hip Hop Family Tree. But I'm not getting the box set because I had book three, so I'm just going to get book four. Yeah. So if I, as I do, have March, book one, and then book two, I'm not going to get the box set. I'm just going to get book three. <laughs> Well, well, I don't have book two or book three. I may get the box set. Yeah. I have the box. <laughs> is, is there anything different or extra in the box set, do you know? Uh, I believe it's just all three. Okay. But so. there may be something else. Like I know Image does, um, when they put out their, the omnibus or whatever, they'll do, uh, like, there'll be extra stuff in it. And so usually if I bought the other ones before, I may use those. Um, see who hasn't read that in my friend circle and then give it to them and then get myself the really nice <laughs> edition. Nice. You know, just share comics while also getting myself nicer versions of those comics. <laughs> it works. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, when I went through the uh, when I went through that, the only thing I really saw was uh, more statues. I collect BBC statues. Did you not see the evil Ernie thing? I you should be getting like five know. copies of that. I don't know who the evil <laughs> yes. Ernie is. Well, well, you you should a, be getting yeah. ten copies of it. <laughs> Because yeah. you need to know. Yeah. 
And then there was the uh, second saga of uh, Lady Killer in there as well. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, that's big news. That, Go for it. Because <laughs> I'm so excited. Sabrina was the one who got me onto Lady Killer, so I'll have her explain that because well, it's great. That was good. And also, the first series is up for an ice cream. Mm-hmm. Well, rightly so. Uh, Jolie Jones's art is beautiful, mm-hmm. and I'm so excited. She's uh, our, our main lady of Lady Killer has moved to Florida to continue her uh, craft, <laughs> as we'll put it. <laughs> but uh, the little preview was great. That's in, that's in previews, and it might be in the new Im- image previews that came out this month. I haven't had a chance to look at that one yet, but it's bloody and fun. Yeah, it is fun. I, I read that first arc, and I thought that that was, it was a fun story, really but enjoyable. And it, 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 it ended in such a way that it made sense that they would continue with another arc. Right? Yeah, and I'm pretty excited about the Mobius library. Oh, with um, uh, yeah, Dark Horse, yeah. back in print. So that's going to be cool. And in, and in fact, uh, you know, I think I mentioned to you guys, what was it, Free Comic Book Day? I made another announcement uh, that we would, I, I think I, I said that there, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I mentioned that we would be doing a monthly uh, Bande Dessinée. Or European comics episode oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. in June. I was about to say, I was like, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know you mentioned it before because I remember I wasn't there for comic book day, and I remember you mentioning something about yeah. that. Yeah, and, and I mentioned that because uh, Edward and I have our eyes on that library from Dark Horse. So I think the first volume comes out. Is it November? I think so. October, or November. Yeah. And um, so that, yeah, that will be something that we'll definitely discuss on the show. Mm-hmm. Wow, 28 years old. Yeah. So there's, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I totally can't hear it this year. Anyway, yeah. uh, Annette, not Annette, Marguerite Bennett has a new book that's coming out under Aftershock, which is going to be pretty interesting. It well, she already is, does insects. Well, she's doing another one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know a thing about it, but I'm okay with that. But it's essentially all of Earth's animals uh, become, you know, critically thinking, talking, and vengeful. Okay. So uh, you have your your young girl and her her dog is protecting her as they're going on their journey. Awesome. So it looks it looks like it's going to really be interesting, and the cover art's really beautiful. So. Who, who's doing the art? Uh oh, Raphael. Ah, De La Torre? I butcher names. It's a gift. <laughs> Mispronouncing things is her thing. It's true. Oh, and if you haven't looked at Mesolith, volume two. No, I have not. Oh, it's worth it. And this is, bo- that's Boom. That is indeed Boom. But it's like a prehistoric... I think we mentioned the yeah. first volume whenever it was solicited on it's our, our preview yeah. show. It's yeah. beautiful. I haven't read it though. I recommend. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you know, you mentioned the the Marguerite Bennett with the new title from Aftershock. I mean, you know, Aftershock is just doing a lot. It, it, it's amazing. We did about a month and a half ago a publisher spotlight on Aftershock, mm-hmm. and you know, had we waited about a month or so to do that show, we would have probably had to read almost twice as much in order to do everything on Aftershock up to that point. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do it sooner rather than later, because we knew that they had a lot of new titles that were about to come out. And there's been, only so much you can discuss They've been the hitting show. the ground running. Like, this is definitely the way to launch a new title, or a new company. Mm-hmm. It's definitely to bring in those big-name people and show the world what they can do in, like, things that they could not probably publish anywhere else. Yeah. Well, you know, well, they... I mean, maybe they could, they but could, like they're, because, they're doing like very different titles. They're not just being like, we're only doing superheroes, we're not doing just like lesbian insect sex. They're doing like all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, many of these titles from, from Aftershock, you could find in Image or mm-hmm. from Vertigo yeah. or, or, or similar places. So it's just interesting that they're going to this new publisher, Aftershock. And, and what's even most more notable, I think, is the fact that they're getting so many big-name creators. Mm-hmm to do their own thing there. And, and that's good. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and I think you know I, I don't feel like 100% enthusiastic about everything that Aftershock is doing because there's some titles that strike me as eh, it's okay. I mean, you know, it, uh, uh, Insects is is one of those. I think I may have said it before in the show that you know I read the first three or four issues and I thought yeah it, it's an interesting premise. But the story had a lot of holes in it. I, and, and I think that, I mean, the art is beautiful, I think. That stands out. Definitely. I don't know if it's the strongest storytelling. Um, my, now, my co host, Andy, disagrees with me. He thinks that the story seems pretty good. Me, I, I don't know. I, I, I use the phrase moth eaten, given the fact that it deals with insects. <laughs> Well, have you had a chance to check out uh, Replica? Yes. I like Replica. Me too. Yeah, that, that, that's one of my favorites uh, yeah. that Aftershock has done. I like Super Zero. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's yeah, cute. Yeah, you told me about that. Mm-hmm. I've also read the first couple of issues of Rough Riders, which is the one with uh, Roosevelt. Oh, yeah, the steampunk Roosevelt. Yeah, very League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but with actual historic characters. Yeah. Instead of literary characters. Yeah. So, so yeah, Aftershock's right. doing a lot of really good stuff. Um, yeah. But you know, before we were recording, Sabrina, you were telling me that you have read issues that you've gotten previews of, and there was one in particular that you were extremely excited about. Well, Stephanie and I both got to read the first issue of Snot Girl. Ah. We did. Oh, did you? Indeed. I actually kind of encouraged her to read that because I read it and I was like, the end game left me like, well, that's not at all where I thought this was going and I need someone else to read it and actually confirm that I did not hallucinate that ending because <laughs> it was just very like, it's written by uh, Brian Lee O'Malley who did Scott Pilgrim and other books. Seconds. And um, mm-hmm. that's the other one I was thinking of. Um, and so it's basically about this girl who's living like a, a life as a fashion blogger and tries to appear as perfect as possible. And um, but like her life is in tatters, and she also has like really bad allergies where it's like she's just suffering all the time, and she's trying not to do that. That's the title, Snot yeah, Girl. Yeah, so yeah. that's where the title comes from. And there's actually a variant where it's like her with like tissues in her nose, and I'm like, if you've been sick, you've probably done that. So it's a relatable, yeah, kind of sort of premise. And then. I don't know how much we can divulge because it's like a uh, retailer's preview, so I don't want to like spoil anything, but I, I, I was very interested in what's going to happen with it. Yeah, and after the issue, you get a little mini-comic that Brian puts out to kind of explain the inspiration, since he apparently <laughs> suffers terrible allergies and went through the trouble of like doing allergy shots, so I guess... That Brian Lee O'Malley himself has... Mm-hmm. That's what it looked like, well, yeah. Yeah, things so, you learn about your authors. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can sympathize, because right now I can only hear out of one ear. My Wouldn't it be interesting if they had a, 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 a another variant that came with tissue that <laughs> you could just not? pull out of the, the, the cover? Well, Maybe I mean, that's not, the in, trade. that's not impossible, because I know, was it Beauty? Beauty had a retailer thing where, I don't know how they ex- distributed it, but we do have a Beauty condom? number one that has a condom. Oh. In a pamphlet. They had a pamphlet. Oh, about I have, at safe sex. <laughs> I have those. And yeah. in fact, you guys, okay, you, you, may, you may not be checking out the Comics Alternative uh, website on a regular basis. Like. And in fact, when, um, okay, a little backstory. When we were at Heroes Con last year, uh, Jeremy Hahn was there and he was giving out the condom and the pamphlet. <laughs> nice. And so I got one, and then it was there that Kunkka and I made arrangements to interview him. And oh god, uh, the, who's the artist on that? I'm, I'm blanking. Oh. And then please, uh, I'm sorry, because we I, interviewed him. But we made arrangements to interview the two of them when the first issue either came out, but I think it was solicited. So yeah, we so we put up the interview early. And when after we published that interview, I put up scans of the condom, the front and the back <laughs> package, and the pamphlet. And put that up on our website. So if, if people you know weren't lucky enough to get the condom and the pamphlet, then they could see it on our blog. Yeah, yeah if they could send uh, 
You know, just an idea for the publishers of Snot Girl. If you want to send us a Snot Girl themed tissue box, Sabrina and I would be very happy with that. I would use those Kleenex. Is that <laughs> yep. Oh, also, number two. Can I can I have early two, yeah. please? Oh, sure. <laughs> send it. We will read it. Oh, yeah. I really want to know what happens because that was not where I thought it was going. Well, yeah. You know, I think it's interesting that you guys are asking the, the publishers <laughs> to send you things. The story on that is... What was it two months ago? You mentioned something about having read the the early, I guess, retailers' release of the fix. Yes. And you know, as we mentioned last month, what happened was that apparently um, Steve Lieber heard that podcast, and thank you, Steve, for listening. Awesome. And, Steve. and he contacted you and, and sent you a postcard and said, yeah. "Thank you for mentioning this on the Comics Alternative podcast." Indeed. So I'm just hoping they they hear us and mm-hmm. they they uh, hook us up so we can, you know sell your comic better to the customers. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's Would that. Would you like a tissue? And by the way, check out Snug Girl number one. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, I like when things like this happen because it suggests that people listen to the podcast and we have some kind of pull. Now, Kunk and I like to call it the Comics Alternative bump <laughs> that, that we bring people. Nice. And in fact, right. on, on the episode that just went up today, on Wednesday, uh, we do our annual talk on the Eisner nominations. And we, of course, we patted ourselves on the back because we said, you know, Many, if not most, of this creator, these creators and editors um, have been on the show, or we've discussed their works over the past year. So, right? What can mm-hmm. what can we say? You helped. Yes. <laughs> We did a thing. Oh, yes. If I may bump another book, I read... Um, bump all you want, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I read Satellite Falling Number 1, and I really, really enjoyed that. I was. Um, it's basically about this bounty hunter who loses her girlfriend, um, and she basically moves to an alien satellite where there are no other humans because she doesn't want to see anything that reminds her of her girlfriend. And so the bounty, hun- bounty hunting hijinks like a... <laughs> a bounty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. We are a uh, working comic book store after all. So, um, do you have bounty hunter hijinks as well as like shape shifting aliens and like international drug cartel or intergalactic drug cartels? And it's really interesting. I really liked it. <laughs> I think I still have the preview for that that you guys handed out a couple mm-hmm. of months back. Mm-hmm. The preview was really good, so I kind of want to read it. And that's a, is that an image title? I mm, I thought that was was it that film? I feel it might be IDW. Boom. I can look it up. Let's check the fountainhead of all knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to keep all these publishers in our head. Or Matt has the previews catalog there. You can look right. it up. Right. Or oh, I see it on the wall. It is IDW. IDW. Yeah, so IDW. we were wrong. Good Image. Eyes. Boom. No, it's IDW. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. She found it about a quarter second before my search loaded. Well, it's right behind you. <laughs> yeah. She's she's the store manager. She knows where things are. Mm-hmm. She knows where all the comics are buried. It's mm. true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know where all the good stuff is. Mm-hmm. And just go digging. Well, speaking of good stuff, you've got something else that you seem to be chomping at the bit to, to mention. So, and I have not been aware of that. I'm not aware yeah, of this title. Uh, I actually learned about Heathen through the Valkyries Facebook group. Someone was uh, gushing about how wonderful it was. So I checked it out. And it was actually in last month's previews. This so, trade? Uh, yes, indeed. She's released about four issues. If you go to Heathen.com, you can check is, it out. And the she is? Who is the author? Uh, Natasha Altric, I'm assuming is how it's pronounced. Altric? Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, but anyway. Altric. Yeah, like she's a, an art student, so she's very confident in art. Uh, but she's never really done a whole lot of writing. But I think that she did a really great job. Uh, telling the story. So she does the writing and the art. This is all of all her, all Natasha. And this wow. is published through Literary uh, Literati Press. Yeah, yeah, a publisher I've never heard of, <laughs> but I uh, I couldn't wait for da- Diamond mm-hmm. Distributor to to pick this up. I, I bought it off off of the publisher's website, but uh, it's great. It's probably technically a fantasy story but it's definitely got a lot of inspiration from Norse mythology which I am a sucker for <laughs> I love that stuff those are whole yeah you went great. gaga when uh, Brian Wood's new title came out a few months ago which I feel terrible I have two issues and I haven't been able to find the time to read them speaking of this the day it came in I was like oh I'm just gonna read a couple issue uh, a couple pages and go to bed the heathen and I ended up I couldn't put it down it was so good wow. Uh, well, she's a writer, so yeah. the storytelling must be fantastic. The, the type 
is a little fuzzy in some spots. It's not like the best publishing um, as far as the font goes, but I mean, it's still very readable, but her art is, is great. It's sort of messy, but like good messy. It's like, just got a really great mm -hmm. style about it, but it's about this young woman who gets, um, she's sick of the gods stuff. Like stuff. She's tired of them shit. Okay. So she she's like, I'm not afraid of the gods. I'm gonna confront them and do my best to to change things because well this is just BS. And she also like a Valkyrie as well. Uh she's she is bow. not, but she definitely runs into some interesting characters through her journey and it it doesn't stop with volume one. There's definitely gonna be So this is current volumes. ongoing. Yeah. I'm I mean, I don't know how quickly she's able to to get it out, but definitely support support this this young woman and her fantastic. And you book. mentioned that she's out of Oklahoma. I believe she is. I believe that's what I read. I think she's. It came really fast too. They're like, oh, just is just an email saying that your book's set, and I was like, thanks. I'm holding it in my hands. <laughs> well, maybe Literati is out of, of Oklahoma. I don't know. That might they be. They should it. have information somewhere. Also, if you want more information on it, there is a website for it. It's www dot heathen comic all one word dot com <laughs> yes so keep an eye out see if uh, you can get your local comic shops to pick it up I'm definitely trying to get it for this shop because it's it's worth worth the read wow okay I love it <laughs> so and, uh, good. And you, you may be getting her contacting you uh, you know sending you goodies saying thank you for mentioning this on the comics right write more draw more <laughs> <laughs> the heck with life just draw <laughs> right <laughs> if I could if I could just throw money at her <laughs> so is anyone going to the Dallas Con, uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend. Yeah, I'll be there. I, I I'll be there. There. I'm hoping so. Uh, due to stuff that recently happened, I'm not sure if everything's going to go smoothly, but I'm excited to hopefully go. <laughs> okay. I might have to send some stuff with you, Craig. Sweet. <laughs> I'm would... very much a maybe, so We're, don't leave before I get a chance to talk to you about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to go, and I'm, I'm going to take, of course, my recording equipment, and I'm hoping that there will be people that I can interview there. I, I, more times than not, when I go to the con, I can generate you know, a pretty good interview show from mm -hmm. that. Um, but I think the last time I was able to go, which was back in the fall, there was really no one there that I hadn't talked with two or three times before, like Joe Eisma. I mean, I talk with him almost every time, and he's always great to have on the show, but if I talk to him every time I see him at a con or at some kind of location event, you know, it, it seems like the usual suspects over and over again, so I don't want to keep doing the same thing over well, and over again. It's not like he's going to hiss at you and you know, put up yeah. the cross or something. Uh, but, you know, I like, I like to mix it up a bit. But the people who were there, either I didn't know their work, which is you know, not a bad thing because I, in interviewing them, they can educate me on what. They can, <laughs> but a lot of the people do work primarily, if not exclusively, in the superhero genre. Mm -hmm. So, what does it seem like to to have someone who you know does the comics alternative? Oh, we don't discuss superhero comics. Oh, hey, can we interview you? Yeah, but um, well, a lot, of, <laughs> go, a lot of those guys like Frank Miller is going to be there, and he's done some independent work as well. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, see, so you see, you're talking. Okay, Frank Miller is a kind of personality that I could never get to to interview. Well, I'm being hopeful here. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean I would love to, but 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 something like that. I mean, they do ask you for bigger names to uh, contact the organizers to see if something can be arranged. Um, I think a, a year or two ago, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I said, oh, if you can arrange something for me to talk with Stan Lee, and they said, no, that's not going to happen. And I knew that wasn't going to happen, but I asked anyhow. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, all you can be told is no. Yeah, but right. No but, but, harm in asking. But again, with, with the comic side of the Dallas Con, and it's the same thing with yeah. conventions like Wizard World, right? I mean, the, the same kind of beast. You know, the big names there are, for the most part, I mean, the really big names aren't going to be in comics. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple like the Stan Lees that go around, you know, jump in and then jump out. You know, they get their money and all that. You know, you can take a photograph and that's that. 
and I'm being cynical here. But, you know, they keep shrinking down, it seems like, Artist Alley so much to where I, I know that uh, a few creators, uh, Hunter S. Zombie uh, was mentioning this, oh. that they not only increase the price of the table at the Dallas Con, but they also put you in loca- – if you're a creator, they put you in a location that is not conducive to traffic. In other words, generating revenue. So uh, I know that he just quit going, and I know that I've heard Andy Hirsch – talk about some problems that he's had Mm -hmm. with the Dallas Con as well. And so it's these kind of events. And I have nothing against other media at comic conventions, right? I mean, it's a comic convention, but the, you know, many of them now are very heavy in TV, in film, cosplaying. All that's fine. I mean, that's fun. But I'm going there to talk with people who write and draw comics. Right. And, or, or, or publish it. Sometimes publishers are there and editors. So I want to talk with them. But if that pool shrinks, then you know, I can't really get much of an interview show from it. But right. I'm hoping There's a lot to... of great people there. I mean, yeah. you got Todd McFarlane. I mean, again, you got J. Scott Campbell. He's done other stuff other than just superhero comics. We yeah. all know him from his superhero <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But uh, Another thing to keep in mind, though, is when some of those really big Ryan names... You from Invincible there. That's not independent. <laughs> right. But with some of these really big names, it's difficult to talk with them. I mean... One, they have a lot of people there at the table, and two, even if they don't, there's the potential that people are going to come up and talk with them. Right. And so I've been told many times, thanks, but no thanks. Like Bernie Wrightson. About a year or so ago, uh, Bernie Wrightson was at the Dallas Con, yeah, and I wanted yeah. to talk to him for just a few minutes. He was at the February Con. But he, he, you know, and I respect this. He said, thanks, but I may have customers come by and uh, talk with me, so or fans come by and want me to sign things or I can sell stuff. I, I don't blame him because he's there for that reason, mm-hmm. and I respect that. Yeah. Um, so usually when I talk to people at cons like this, they're going to be names that aren't that well known, um, yeah. which is fine because but I that's like how you to get discover to know them. <laughs> exactly. And so I like to discover uh, new artists. But I like last your stuff that you talk about people I don't know, yeah. and because I don't know them, but now I have something to go find out about yeah. them. I know Neil Adams. I know. Yeah. The big guys, I know they're fun to interview because we all love them. But it's more I I have enjoyed your interviews with the people that I don't know, and forced me to go out and find their work, and and read them and go, wow, these guys are amazing. And I wouldn't have done it if you haven't took the chance on you know interviewing somebody I've never heard of. Well, that's good because now you know I have uh, even more of a reason to go out there and mm-hmm. make interviews happen. There you go. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, there was just something weird about last November. I, I don't I don't think it, that was. It wasn't well attended, but there may or now, I guess, is June. Uh, yeah, this is the con. big, yes, one. Is the big mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah this is the big one. Uh, yeah, there was one in uh, not that long ago, a couple of months ago, that you could have talked to Bernie Weinstein. who was really, really small, and wasn't a lot of people there. And he probably would have been happy to talk to you because there wasn't just that many uh, customers there, and he was, you know, lots of time where he was just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Yeah. So. And I can only buy so many prints. Right. <laughs> yeah, always the way. You know, and sometimes going to these events, I'm a little intimidated by some of these names, and I think, you know, just go up and ask them, you never know. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, I've had some pretty good conversations talking with people. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when we had Brian Stelfreeze in our store. Oh, yeah. That happened. It was really cool. Uh, you yeah. just Because uh, Freddie helped him uh, get the books for Black Panther number one for him to sell, when that was pretty much impossible to find. And so... He came in with um, his entourage, I guess would be the word for his it. His buddy shops yeah. here. Yeah, so basically they, they came in and basically were like, hey, we just wanted to meet Freddie, which unfortunately he was not here. But we but, were. But we were. <laughs> and um, so he signed some comics for us, and he also signed a copy for me, oh, so yeah. I have that. Oh, and that's me too. like just really great. <laughs> yeah, wow. but I was, I was like super intimidated. I was like... Oh, just do it. Just ask him if he could sign a few yeah. copies. Of Although Black I was, Panther. I was a little sad because then we had a customer come in and he was like wanting to know every little detail about this book that wasn't out yet. And I was like, oh God, please just let me go back and talk. Right, we <laughs> want to talk to Brian. He's so cool. <laughs> Would well, you know if um, if Collected will have um, some presence there? I know I've seen Ron at mm-hmm. the uh, these cons. Is he going to be there? Uh, I know he tries to hit up all local conventions mm-hmm. and he's definitely even gone out of the way to go to nearby states conventions as well because so. I've seen him down in Austin uh, I see yeah. him often in Dallas so I'm, assur- I'm assuming that he's going to be there I'm assuming as as well I haven't had a chance to look at our convention schedule because it's a safe assumption go. yeah it is uh, is there a list of everybody who's going to be showing up 
uh, somewhere. Yeah, you go to the you go to the, go to the, the website. Yeah. DallasFanExpo.com. Yeah. yeah, we have a flyer as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have I'm, a mountain of flyers. You can have several. Yeah, yeah. there's two people. <laughs> that Pass them out to your friends. <laughs> right? there's, there's two people I'm hoping will be there, but they probably won't. Who? Yeah. Who, <coughs> who are you looking forward to seeing? Um, Gwendolyn Yeo and Hedy Barres. No. I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, and in terms of celebrities this time really around, they, they're having some some thing. pretty big names. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was actually really surprised because they actually are branching out into um, beyond anime voice actors. They're bringing in um, the voice of Commander Shepard and also Tom Kenny. And well, Lady Shepard. Lady Shepard, yeah, we that's true, because Mark Shepherd. Mir is um, Dude Shepard, and then a uh, female Dude Shepherd Shepherd. is uh, Jennifer Hale. <laughs> And then Con- Kevin Conroy is supposed to show up as well? Yes, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. If you can ever go to his panel, it's oh, totally worth it. And he'll probably uh, get asked about his uh, experience volunteering oh, during 9-11, so which is a wonderful it's a story. story. Uh, um, because basic, but... Uh, he has a lot of great If you can find stories. it, definitely do. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's yeah. a wonderful story. <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of country great people. If, you know, Peter if Capaldi? Of Daredevil, yeah. right. Doctor Who is going to be uh, there. Right. Yeah. No Capaldi. offense to Jenna Coleman, but she has canceled, like, I think the past two times she was canceled. She is not canceled this time, so if you, want that, <laughs> if you want that autograph, now is your time. <laughs> right, hopefully. Uh, John Bernthal is going to be there, the guy that played the Punisher on the, mm-hmm. on the Netflix Daredevil series. I still haven't uh, seen that yet. I still I haven't have, watched it. I haven't either. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I still need to. Well, so well, well, and what's the chick's name who plays Sky or Daisy, I guess, oh. on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Oh, God, I know She's going to be there, isn't she? Yeah, yes, yeah. she is. Yeah, she's going to be there, I know too. Uh, yeah. we have a customer named, uh, customer named Michael Anderson who loves Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he's like, oh, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to get her to sign my hero clicks. <laughs> Well, I've never so seen it. Oh, Michael, I think Michael's talked with us on the show a few times on location. Yeah, I think yes, so. I haven't yeah. seen him in a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the new it's house. Uh, Chloe think. Bennett, isn't it? Yes, Chloe yeah, Bennett. There you. we go. Sorry, it took me a while. But <laughs> now, see, that's that's a show that I'm following pretty well. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I think it's if okay. You love, if I you like that, that, you're going to love Daredevil season yeah. two. And if, uh, Chloe Bennett's really great, so I mean, if you have She's a chance to meet her, I'd definitely do it. And then, uh, yeah, it, there's there's somebody for everybody here. Yeah. Uh, it really is. Uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, they got Star Wars guests. Yeah. Uh, some of you know one of them. The big one is canceled, but uh, who's the big one? Uh, uh, Carrie Fisher's yeah, canceled. But she oh. was here last year, so yeah. I don't blame her if she was like, I can't go to this one. So, but Jerry Bullock yeah. will still be there. Yeah. And, and uh, you the got voice the co- uh, and actor for C-3PO who voices him in every single thing ever. Yeah, so yeah. If you, know if you have some C-3PO merchandise get signed, get him to sign it. Oh, yeah. There's lots of stuff. you got, And it's all over the place. you got Booger from uh, Revenge of the Nerds is going to be there. <laughs> you also have uh, John. Okay, so you, okay, that's a reason to go. Booger is going to be there. Okay. Well, yeah. If, if you asked, asked Freddie, that He's would be... the person that matters. Yeah. Uh, that's our, not true. He's just jealous because he can't see John. Cusack. No. Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, if you looked at John Cusack's, uh, <laughs> yeah. if you looked at John Cusack's uh, thing, instead of saying what he's been in for the longest time, they just said Hollywood icon. Yeah. <laughs> well, J- J- and Joan. Oh yeah, and Joan. too. But they're just weird. Hollywood icons. Yeah. Even though they do have her as a voice actress for uh, Jesse of Toy Story two and three. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's a it's a good it's a good looks like a good show. Yeah. It really does. Um, lots of lots and lots of stuff to go see. Whether it's comics or uh, you know TV and, and movie stars. Uh, and this will be at the Dallas Convention Center. Yes, not it'll be at the so Dallas if, Convention Center. If you are local and you're worried about parking for such a big event, Take the, the train. Dart goes right up to it, so you don't right even at, need right at the parking. Door. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I it, right. I think they've actually got a station in the. Yeah, the they do center. indeed. You just yeah. have to go across a, a street and you're there. And then they'll have the cops will be there, so you don't have to worry about getting run over. So, yeah. <laughs> which is nice. Well, yes. Yeah, that's a positive thing, right? Uh, which is also uh, always really fun is going on the dart during that weekend and seeing all the people in costume. And you're going to get a double dip of strangeness on the dart because Acon is the same time. So prepare for a lot of weird costumes on the dart. Oh, that's that's <laughs> gonna be great. Or, as I like to say, prepare for a lot of awesome costumes. Well, true. <laughs> but it's just like it's always amazing seeing yeah. like um, the people who don't know that it's happening. Happening, just looking around with like bright eyes, like oh. yeah, that's actually fun. That's, no, that's like, enjoyable. Been, that is the best yeah. thing. So, those of you who are going, are you going to dress up? Yes. Um, if I do, it will probably be as Scarlet Witch. I might do a fusion of the movie and uh, comic book version. So, because I oh, you're getting a little nuanced. Yeah, there. yeah right. because I did that for the Captain or not Captain America, the Civil. 
God, there's so many movies in the MCU. I did it for the Age of Ultron, where she made her first appearance. I wore, like, a red shirt, a kind of punkish jacket, because she kind of did the whole mall goth thing in that movie. And then the headdress and wig, because I will never let go of that headdress. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I'll probably do that, but with a dress this time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, I only have two costumes. So <laughs> Well, I have a third, but I don't wear it as a lot. But... Uh, so Sunday, I have a photo opportunity with John Bernthal, so I'll be dressing as the Punisher for Sunday, um, along with the thousand of other Punisher fans. And uh, and then Saturday, I'll probably be uh, the Netflix Daredevil for take pictures with John wow. Stan Lee. And then Friday, maybe I'll be a Star Trek character. So. <laughs> Always a good Meanwhile, choice. I don't, any, I don't have any costumes at all, so I'll probably just stand around looking awkward in one of my shirts that I made. <laughs> and you don't know if you're going. Matt. Um, I might be busy that weekend. Busy. I, mm-hmm. You're it, always busy. You always have that. <laughs> I, I, I suspect you're just playing video games and they're like, yeah, I told him I was busy. Hey, I, I actually busy. haven't touched yeah. video games in a, in a fairly uh, long while. I've been traveling actually these past couple of weeks and having uh, family over next weekend. So I bring the family. I know. My, my, <laughs> they can meet my William Monday, my, <laughs> my Monday is going to be my Sunday and for Memorial Day. So. I won't have any. It, that's just going to be laundry day. It was, won't have any time to do anything else. <laughs> See, I, I'm going to go. I'm tempted, <laughs> and I've always I, I've been tempted in the past to to dress as something. It'd be mm-hmm. kind of like ragtag. Uh, I have a cool Doctor Who scarf that my wife made me, mm-hmm. so, uh, nice. but I've never worn it. Worn it because you know I'm going there with a media pass, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I just feel it's like that i need to look not, i mean not professional but mm-hmm. not a cosplayer you know going in with yeah. my media credentials to interview yeah. people now my daughter zoe is going with me and she gets a media pants as well but what she and she cosplays and so she dresses up but she tries to talk with other cosplayers and take their pictures for the blog nice. so that's what she so her awesome. cosplaying is part of what she does mm-hmm. you know the, the medium is the message there yeah. now this year, I might just wear my black pork pie hat oh, nice. and go as Walter White. Nice. Oh, nice. There you go. Because I got the I got the dome now. Yep. <laughs> May as well. Did you right? see uh, jo- uh, Giancarlo Esposito when he was in there? Uh, he came, I think, last year, and I was sat in in his panel because it was right before the Stan Lee panel, and uh, he talked about Breaking Bad, and also, like, he's a very intense person. Yeah, I think I saw the tail end of that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there was a point in time where he basically did this thing about projecting, so he turned off his microphone, went to the center of the stage, and projected, and I was sitting up top because I was, you know, just wanting a seat away from everyone else, and I could hear him perfectly. Like, mm-hmm. He's a very interesting person, so if you never had the chance to hear him, just go see him. <laughs> hear him project. Yes. yes. Hear him project. <laughs> and he played Gus. Yes, he did. Yeah. And he talked about like the makeup process and like when they actually uh, told him about that because he knew it was always going to come, but he said he wanted a really great moment and they brought that to him. He's like, I will allow this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's an incredible mm-hmm. actor. The very first thing I saw him in was Do the Right Thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he played the character Bugging Out, I mean, he really made that film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which I believe Alamo Drafthouse is or just recently showed mm-hmm. uh, an airing of that. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's a great film. But, but he's been in a, a whole host of other mm-hmm. things. Um, so, yeah, that, that uh, would be good. So, I, yeah, I could go as, mm-hmm. as Walter White. I don't know if I will, but do it. Have fun with it. Do yeah. it. I mean, and you have me going as Scarlet heart. Witch every year, so you have, follow your heart. <laughs> right? Having fun with it is the whole, yeah. it's the whole purpose. Which, okay, so, so as a way of wrapping up here, this on-location show, let's talk about... Oh, yes. I actually have one more thing. Oh, okay. I told Andy I would talk about it, so I want to hold up my oh, the this, Oh, this is the, the signing? Yes, okay. we finally oh, scheduled it. We definitely have it. to mention this yeah uh june 8th is the day uh wednesday that the last issue of baker street peculiars comes out that's issue four and he will be in our store uh at five to do a signing to celebrate the the final issue of the book he did there for so definitely swing by if you can andy's a great guy yeah I won't be in town then, unfortunately, so I can't be here. Yeah. But I'm glad that you mentioned that. In fact, this is the second time that Andy Hirsch has been mentioned on this show, <laughs> right. uh, this episode. And yeah. you've mentioned this in the past, too. So Andy's getting a lot of love from Actually, these on-location shows. Actually, I mentioned shows. him a third time. 
please do. <laughs> yes. He also did the uh, a page of art in the new Squirrel Girl that just came out. So it's ah, been busy. I did not <laughs> yeah. know that. Nice. So definitely pick up Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. This oh, week. too bad that wasn't out on Free Comic Book Day. He could have signed copies of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, because he was here and he, he talked with us for a bit. So yeah, Andy's a great guy. Yeah, indeed. So, um, but actually, that, that that I guess kind of figures into where I was about to go in terms of wrapping up is what you guys may be looking forward to in the weeks to come. So one thing that Sabrina, you're looking forward to is this final issue of Baker Street Peculiars. Yes, indeed. I've been following it, so it's, it's a good. good story. It really is. It is. It's fun. It's it's nice from the whole dark broody. Stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a good break. <laughs> Language's writing's great, and of course, Andy's art is is, is outstanding. Top notch. Yep. But what about the rest of you? What are you looking forward to regarding comics it's over a- the next two or three weeks? Well, uh, more Scooby Doo Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> it's the. I know it just came out today, but it's you know basically how the the Scooby gang is going to stop the apocalypse. It's absolutely amazing. I didn't know I needed this in my life, but I'm really happy that it is here in my life. <laughs> yeah, I I um, was uh, pretty good. Yeah, it really is. It's it's surprisingly good. It's uh um God, I can't. Find I would that, be but willing by, to read that uh, if Keith Scrappy Griffin. is nowhere to be found. Oh, no, he, he be no Scrappy. Oh, no, no. Scrappy Doo has been retconned. Yes. Well, if anything, <laughs> they're allowed to have Scrappy Doo in their as like a test subject briefly so that they could just kill him off. Yeah. <laughs> See, I think it would be great if, if, if they bring Scrappy Doo into the story and they're crossing the street, he gets run over by a car. I'm okay with that too. Oh. Yeah. I hated yeah. Scrappy Doo as a kid. Yeah. I, I think everybody does. But yeah, check out yeah. the Scooby Apocalypse. <laughs> uh, other comic books that are coming out, I'm still really loving the new Wolverine line. Oh, and I'm still surprised at myself fantastic. for really loving that. Usually when you kill off my favorite character, I usually end up hating whoever takes over for it. But this has been surprisingly delightful. So, uh, yeah, it's she's playing Wolverine up like... Uh, you know, back in the oh. '70s type, where she doesn't kill, but that doesn't mean body parts won't be leaving. You know, it's. Yeah. If I may also for that mm-hmm. book, if you want to catch up on that, it's fantastic, and the trade just came out like two weeks ago or so. Yeah. And I would recommend it, especially a uh, issue that that's not included in the trade but came out right after is a team up with Squirrel Girl, <laughs> and it's oh, really sweet. It's like she she brings a Wolverine that she saved from a testing facility, and is like, "Hey, I brought you an animal companion." And she's mm-hmm. like. Why? And she's like, oh, you don't talk to these? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and also, it, it may have some ramifications for future uh, Wolverine stuff, since Hugh Jackman is stepping down uh, from Wolverine, or at least he says so. Uh, uh, they, they have been hinting at very severely uh, that uh, there will be a new Wolverine taking over, and that they're, they're leaning towards a, a Laura uh, move to take take over as a female Wolverine to take over but it's Fox you never know they can find a way to mess well, there was some and introducing Doc <laughs> yes there was some really good uh, I didn't know if it was a fake image uh, online uh, they did in old man Logan Hugh Jackman yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if that's actually what Wolverine 3 is going to end up being. Uh, that's up to her debate on what's going on. Yeah. Right. It would uh, be or if they're very just difficult teasing, you know? due to rights. <laughs> uh, well, no, they would have the rights to it. Um, well, that, but it's like you don't have the villains, which yeah. is... Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a little tricky. But uh, the way it's looking right now, it, it seems more like a... Uh, It'll have some of the elements of Old Man Logan, because it'll be a buddy trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not with Hawkeye, because they don't have the rights to Hawkeye. Uh, so it's going to look like it's going to be with Professor Xavier. And Wolverine will be cruising around town with, with Professor Xavier, getting into hijinks and whatnot. And we haven't... There's been a few guys, but have no real word on what the villains are yet, mm-hmm. or anything like that. So uh, I associate with Wolverine very often. Yes. <laughs> but... Uh, Anyways, hopefully, you know, anyways, it, hopefully it'll be fun. I like Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I know his movies haven't been the greatest, but I do like him as Wolverine. I think he's done really well. In that case, I'm going to bring up the other possible direction that we could have gone when Wolverine was brought up in that um, I'm really enjoying and I'm also really looking forward to more of Old Man Logan. Yeah, Old Man Logan is really good, in my opinion. I really, really like it. And if you like Old Man Logan, he will be appearing in the next issue of the all-new Wolverine book. So it comes full circle. (laughs) Yeah. And then beyond that, um, 
there's not really much more like comic comics because I'm just trying to get caught up on purchasing all the ones that I still have left to buy. There's a lot of them. But um, I found a new webcomic I like, and I can't go an entire show without mentioning webcomics at least once, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, it's there's only five issues, there's only five pages of it right now. It's called Monstrous Mimi. Monstrous Mimi? Monstrous Mimi. M-I-M-I. -M -I, all one word. Dot com. It's so, it's so great. It's I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. It's it's really good. There's only five pages right now. Go read it. They're all really good. Okay, so you can jump on board uh, to yeah, the very beginning. Yeah, just started. They update every Thursday. Okay. And Matt, what are you looking forward to? You're looking contemplative. Well, I was... Either I'm that to think or of something off the top of my head, and I just haven't been able to read my giant stack of comic books in a long while. Um, I'm kind of enjoying book of previews. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, uh, don't have an excuse this time. <laughs> you know, the regular Squirrel Girl and Howard the Duck. I love uh, and Evil Ernie. And evil, well, yeah, I always enjoy some Evil <laughs> Ernie. I still don't know what that is. That's fine. It's okay. <laughs> we you don't know how poor your life is until now. Clearly, it's fine. <laughs> and so, Brady, you have one more recommendation. You're holding it up to me. Yeah, I totally forgot that I had the opportunity to read the first issue of Black Mask's new title coming out soon, Kim and Kim. Uh, this like is the Batman villain, and neither of those are Kardashian, right? No, Thank this God. is Kardashian it's free. Black. This is a sci-fi book. Uh, it's actually. Uh, all right, so Kim and Kim are two best friends. Yes, they're both named Kim. <laughs> uh, and they are bounty hunters. They're not just, like, running around. They're, they're running around space. They're, like, these big intergalactic bounty hunters. It's very, like, cowboy law enforcement. And they're definitely kind of goofy, Okay. I that guess. Was I mean, last the, uh, month's preview, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. I believe it was solicited last month. But it is actually an intriguing comic for all sorts of reasons. One of them is that the comic is an LGBTQ content created while the writer was in transitioning. LBT, what's the Q? Queer. Yes. Ah. So are we taking Indeed. that back, or what? Is that a thing now? Or? That... <laughs> No, it's it used a, to be a derogatory term, right? Uh, it's been added to the oh, list. That's yeah, been it has been added for, to the list. Uh, well, Where have you been? I'm always I'm late to the party. Like, I was so. just aware of the four, the, the the four one, but now they're adding them five letters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to hit six and seven soon. But I think like. it's the next mm. Black Mask no. book to uh, keep an eye out. I did out. not know that. So. Okay. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. It's hard to keep up with all these things. So much to... And that, who knows, next year it may be up for a Lambda Literary Award. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have another one coming out also that's about a transgender uh, bartender. Transgender bartender? Uh, yes. This so that Black one's Mask coming out in trade. Yeah, Black Mask has a couple of titles that are uh, definitely could could be up for that. That uh, Whatever that thing was called. That you, the Lamba Literary Award. The Lamba Literary Award, yeah. Uh, Mayday, that's what it's called. But, well, and, and this is relatively fresh on my mind. Last night, um, one of my co-hosts, Andy Wolverton, and I interviewed Jeremy Suris, whose book Curveball came out late last year, and we interviewed him last night. It'll be on a future episode of the podcast uh, because his book, Curveball, is up for a Lamb Literary Award under the graphic novels category. So, yeah, I would I wouldn't be surprised if he even got nominated for that too. No, yeah. because our character is she gets kicked out of her clan for being for kissing another woman, mm -hmm. and yeah. did she do that on purpose or? Mm -hmm. well, you know, she's like Two I'm young girls sick of your tomfoolery over like, here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's essentially, it's like banishment, yeah, sure. but... Seems extreme. Well, you know, if there were certain circumstances, you know, created that she couldn't leave her village yeah. unless she was banished, then, you know... It was you know, banishment or marriage yeah. or death oh, yeah, or there you go. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Haha, ha, I win. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know much about heathen, think about it's, it's set in the time period I'm thinking it of. That well, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, people... She's lucky she didn't get stoned or yeah. uh, killed. Well, I mean, or, they're still, they're heathen, they're not... Christian. Was that, right. They that, seem to be a bit more harsh on those things. Yes. That, like, that oh, you're gay, thing let's that they do. prison Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah that's... Oh, no, uh, the, are you talking about the pair? No, the, the bird wings or the, the bird cage thing that they do with... Uh, uh, was that North mythology where they 
grab the Are person's red cage from the back. That's oh, the bloody, the eagle. bloody eagle. Oh, the bloody eagle. Yeah. yeah. I was and thinking they, they might have. They that haven't instead, proved stoning. it because there's a good possibility that your victim would die before you even pulled their lungs out of their rib cage. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> okay. And on that up note, y'all. It's like let's just stand there. Sorry, we're the brightness. We're, you know, just you, too bad you can't see them to just descend <laughs> into <laughs> kind of vicious, <laughs> meaty stuff. Well, this is like an evil meaty. Ernie crowd. We're very casual about <laughs> yeah. the colors. Okay. So. okay. Yeah, casual. I thought that was cool. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's good to know what you guys are looking forward to, and I'm hoping that I will be back in town toward the last part of June for our June show because I'm going to be in North Carolina until probably the third week. Uh, I'm going to be down there seeing the family stuff early on and then I'll be down there in the middle of it for Heroes Con. So I'll be there as well. So uh, I'm hoping to be back in time to where we can schedule one maybe the last week of June. Uh, We'll we'll talk about it. We can also talk about potential topics because we haven't had a specific theme for an on-location show in a while. So maybe we can can choose one of those. Yeah. Uh, So we will be back here next month and uh, if you're wondering where here is and you haven't been listening carefully to the podcast. Well, we're at Collected Comics and Games. It's in Plano, Texas. It's at 3100 Independence Parkway on the corner of Parker and Independence in Plano. If you're in the area, please stop by and come and see these guys because, you know, as you can hear from from everyone here, but specifically Sabrina and and Stephanie, they know their stuff. Uh, I mean, Stephanie was just spouting all of this stuff off. (laughs) She has a vast knowledge that is like she was, you know, consuming all of Wikipedia and she can tell you. I have have a vast knowledge of a great she many is, things. She it's has true. A steel trap mind, oh. and you, we didn't even touch on her knowledge on Transformers. So oh, if you love you, Transformers. If, come see. I Stephanie. could do a Transformers podcast. <laughs> I have a friend who you should meet. Oh, so anyway, uh, please come by and say hello to the guys at Collected Comics and Games. And, you know, if you enjoy our on-location episodes every month, or even if you don't uh, and you want to complain about it, get in touch with me and let me know your thoughts about the show. If you go to our website, comicsalternative.com, you'll see that you can leave us a voice message through the SpeakPipe app, which is really simple and easy to use. Or if you want to call us old school, pick up the phone and dial 4153-COMICS. That's 415-326-6427. You can also email us. We're two guys at comicsalternative.com, or you can email me directly at Derek at comicsalternative.com. And we're all over social media. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Google Plus, Goodreads, Pinterest, and YouTube. You can subscribe to the podcast through iTunes. You can stream us on Stitcher. You can also find us on TuneIn. You can now listen to us via Spotify and, if you're an Android user, Google Play Music. But you can, as always, find every single one of our episodes on location and otherwise by going to the website comicsalternative.com. So, Sabrina, thank you once again for allowing us in your shop. And, guys, I appreciate you coming in and talking. Oh, thanks for coming. I still don't know what I'm talking about, but yay, I'm here. <laughs> Enthusiasm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly.